What if your family tree went deeper than you thought? What if scientists could now prove that two entire nations, separated by sea, culture, and centuries, were actually blood relatives? Today, we're talking about something incredible, something many suspected, but now science confirms. The Irish and the Scots are not just neighbors, they are genetic cousins, and DNA testing has the proof. So grab a cup of tea and settle in. This is the story of how genetics, history, and maps came together to tell us something truly powerful, that the bond between Ireland and Scotland runs deeper than flags, accents, or politics. It runs through their blood. Now let's get started. For centuries, the connection between the Irish and Scots was treated more like a legend than a fact. Historians saw hints, shared folklore, similar languages, and overlapping customs, but it all felt vague. Then came a breakthrough. Scientists began collecting DNA samples from people across Ireland and Scotland. Using high-powered machines, they examined over half a million genetic markers, tiny codes inside our cells that pass down from generation to generation. These genetic markers act like time capsules. They can't be faked, forgotten, or rewritten. And what did they reveal? The results were undeniable. The Irish and Scots shared not just common traits, but common ancestors. People from Ulster in Northern Ireland and the Scottish Highlands showed near identical DNA segments. In fact, many families separated by sea were closer than distant cousins. It was no longer a matter of cultural guesswork. The genes told the truth. History wasn't just in books anymore. It was living inside their bodies. These findings didn't just confirm an old suspicion. They redefined national identity. Irish and Scottish people weren't just neighbors or allies. They were family. And it took modern science to show us what ancient stories could only suggest. But the story didn't end with raw data. It became visible. When scientists began mapping the genetic results, something extraordinary happened. They used color-coded tools to show where people with similar DNA lived. The result was a glowing map of the British Isles, full of vivid lines and patterns. One line stood out above the rest a bold, bright ribbon of shared DNA that stretched from Northern Ireland into Western Scotland. This wasn't a random coincidence. It was a direct line of ancestry. The people in these regions weren't just connected by geography. They were linked by blood. Researchers saw clusters, groups of people with nearly identical genetic patterns, lighting up both sides of the Irish Sea. These patterns showed the footsteps of ancient migrations, cross-sea marriages, and generations of shared life. One expert put it best, DNA shows where your ancestors traveled, who they mingled with, and what traces they left behind. The visual data told a clearer story than words ever could. The Irish and Scots didn't just cross paths, they grew from the same roots. Like two branches of one great tree, they might have reached in different directions, but they started from the same trunk. These genetic maps weren't just scientific charts, they were family portraits painted with the brush strokes of ancestry. To understand how deep this connection goes, we have to travel back over 1,500 years, back to the ancient Gaelic kingdom of Dalriada. Dalriada was no ordinary kingdom. It stretched across the sea, uniting parts of northeastern Ireland with western Scotland under one rule. The people spoke the same language, early Gaelic, and practiced the same culture. They moved freely between the lands, trading goods, marrying into each other's families, and even sharing leaders. Many of today's Highland Scots trace their ancestry directly to the settlers of Dalriada. And where did those settlers come from? Ireland. That's right. The Scottish Gaelic identity wasn't born in the Scottish Highlands. It sailed across the sea with Irish migrants. That's why Irish Gaelic and Scottish Gaelic remain so close even today. They're not cousins by chance. But by origin, the Dalriadan link is one of the earliest documented examples of shared heritage between the two nations. It was real, it was powerful, and it left lasting genetic fingerprints. The kingdom of Dalriada might have faded into history books, but its legacy lives on. In language, in culture, and most clearly, in the DNA of its descendants. Another big clue comes from surnames. DNA testing didn't just confirm that Irish and Scottish people are genetically related. It also helped explain how specific family lines stayed connected across generations and regions. Scientists noticed something fascinating. People with ancient surnames like O'Neill, MacDonald, Campbell, and O'Brien often shared unique DNA clusters. 
These surnames weren't just historical markers. They were living proof of shared ancestry. For example, many McDonald's are found in both Northern Ireland and Western Scotland, and their DNA is nearly identical. That shows a shared family tree. Even families that believed they were purely Scottish or only Irish discovered surprises in their genes. Studies showed that over 20% of Scots, especially in places like Islay, Argyll, and the Hebrides, carry strong Irish genetic signatures. And in Northern Ireland, countless people have DNA that traces back to Scottish settlers from centuries ago. Borders couldn't erase bloodlines. Names, stories, and marriages kept the connection alive, even when history tried to forget. These discoveries made many people rethink their identity. Suddenly, they were part of a much bigger family than they realized. It was like discovering you've been attending family gatherings your whole life, without knowing how truly connected you are. Now let's make it even easier to understand. Let's break it down and look at how scientists connect people through patterns in their DNA. Patterns that act like invisible threads linking long-lost relatives across time and geography. Think of your DNA as a puzzle piece. If your cousin has a similar piece, they'll fit together. Now imagine doing this with thousands of people. When the pieces match across large groups, scientists call it a genetic cluster. These clusters show how people are linked, even if they live in different places. In Ireland and Scotland, several powerful clusters have appeared. First, there's the Ulster Scots cluster, common among people in Northern Ireland and Lowland Scotland. It reflects the mass migration of Scots during the 1600s plantation period. Then, there's the Highland Gale Cluster, found in Western Scotland and the Irish coast. This one ties back to the ancient Gaelic tribes, like the Dalriadans. And one of the most consistent clusters, the Hebrides Ulster Cluster. It shows strong cross-sea movement for more than 1,000 years. These clusters aren't just dots on a map, they're proof of real people moving, marrying, and building lives together. Scientists don't need family trees when they have clusters, because the DNA already tells the story. These patterns make it clear that the Irish and Scots didn't just live close, they lived connected. With that said, let's now turn our attention to physical appearance and genetic similarity. When you look at people from Ireland and Scotland, you might notice they often resemble each other. Many have fair skin, red or chestnut brown hair, and piercing blue or green eyes. Even their facial features, strong cheekbones, rounded jaws, often reflect a familiar look. That's not just chance or climate, it's DNA. These physical traits are passed down through shared ancestors over thousands of years. But the similarities go beyond appearance. Irish and Scottish people also share health-related genetic traits. For example, both populations show high resistance to certain infections likely a result of ancient diseases that forced their immune systems to evolve. They also have a higher risk for specific conditions like celiac disease and multiple sclerosis, pointing to a shared immune blueprint. But it's not all bad news. Their DNA also contains strengths, genetic markers for endurance, physical toughness, and adaptation to cold weather. Traits that likely help their ancestors survive in harsh northern climates. In the end, the DNA doesn't just tell us where they came from. It tells us how they lived, how they fought off disease, braved cold winds, and carried resilience through their blood. It's survival and heritage woven together right down to the bone. Now here's something interesting. At first glance, you'd expect all people from the British Isles to have similar DNA. After all, they live fairly close together. But what scientists found surprised even the experts. Irish and Scottish people are more closely related to each other than to the English or Welsh. This is because it all comes down to history. England was a melting pot of invasions. Romans, Anglo-Saxons, Vikings, Normans, all mixing their DNA into the population. This made English genetics more blended and complex. Wales, while more isolated, has its own unique lineage that differs from both Irish and Scottish patterns. In contrast, Ireland and much of Scotland, especially the highlands and western regions, stayed relatively untouched by these invaders for a long time. As a result, they preserved older genetic lineages that stayed close to their Celtic roots. That's why someone from western Scotland might be more genetically connected to a person from rural Ireland than to someone from London or Cardiff. 
It's one of the clearest examples that geography doesn't always match genetics. Political borders are modern inventions, but DNA? That's ancient truth. And it reminds us that sometimes, your closest kin might not be across the street, but across the sea. Let's now fast forward to a turning point that reshaped both Ireland and Scotland forever. In the 1600s, history took a sharp turn. The British crown launched the plantation of Ulster, moving thousands of Protestant Scots into Northern Ireland. These settlers were sent to control and colonize the region, often replacing Irish landowners. But what happened over the next few centuries was unexpected. These Scottish settlers didn't remain separate forever. Over time, their children and grandchildren began to marry into local Irish families. Their communities blended, friendships formed, cultures mixed, and so did their genes. Today, scientists can still see the Scottish DNA in Ulster families, but they also find strong Irish signals. In some regions, the blend is so complete that the genetic lines are nearly impossible to untangle. People who proudly call themselves Ulster Scots often carry both Irish and Scottish genes in equal measure. It's a reminder that history isn't black and white. Colonization turned into kinship. Strangers became neighbors, neighbors became family. And now, thanks to DNA testing, we can trace that journey not just through books, but through living bloodlines. In a twist of fate, the very act of division brought two peoples even closer together. Cousins once again, by science, by history, and by blood. Now let's talk about the Irish and Scots who left their homeland. Over the centuries, millions of Irish and Scottish people left their homelands in search of better lives. Some fled famine, others escaped war or poverty. Many were simply chasing new opportunities. They landed in countries like America, Canada, Australia, and beyond. And with them, they carried their history, often without knowing just how intertwined it truly was. In the US, for instance, people proudly wear labels like Irish American or Scottish American. But when they take a DNA test, many are surprised. A man who thought he was purely Irish finds out his blood holds strong Scottish markers. A woman raised in a Scottish family learns that her great-great-grandmother was born in Cork, Ireland. Their ancestors didn't just travel far, they traveled together. Many Irish and Scottish immigrants met and married in new lands. Their children carried the dual legacy forward. Now, DNA testing reveals a hidden truth that they weren't just Irish or just Scottish, they were both. Two cultures, one heritage. Today, millions of people in the global diaspora carry this shared bloodline without even knowing it. But the tests are revealing it now, piece by piece. Two roots, one tree, growing stronger across oceans and generations. So what does this all mean, not just for scientists, but for all of us? It means that Irish and Scottish people are part of the same extended family. They share not just geography, but DNA, stories, and struggles. It means old conflicts, fueled by politics, religion, or borders, were often family disagreements without anyone knowing it. Cousins fought cousins, unaware they shared a grandmother centuries back. Today, thanks to science, the truth is clearer. We now have the tools to look beyond surface differences and discover the deep connections beneath. It changes how we see each other. That fiddle music in a Scottish pub, it echoes Melody's first son in Irish hills. That Highland surname you wear proudly, it might trace back to Gaelic roots in Munster or Connacht. And that red hair in your family, it may have come from a Celtic ancestor who lived through wars, migrations, and plagues, and passed their resilience to you. In the end, DNA reminds us that our stories are not separate chapters, but verses in one long song. A song still being sung today. One of unity, roots, and rediscovered kinship. And it's never too late to sing along. In conclusion, DNA isn't just science, it's a story. A deep, living memory that stretches back through the ages. And when it comes to the Irish and the Scots, that story is as rich as the soil they walked and as strong as the waves they crossed. Yes, they have differences, accents, politics, and traditions, but those are surface level. Underneath, in their very cells, lies a shared history. They are cousins, not just symbolically, not just historically, but genetically, flesh and blood. Science has now confirmed what folklore and culture hinted at for centuries. The fiddle tunes of Ireland and the bagpipes of Scotland, they aren't just sounds of two nations, they're the soundtrack of one large family. So next time you hear an Irish ballad or see a Scottish Highlander marching in a parade, 
Remember, you're not just witnessing culture, you're witnessing legacy. You're seeing the survival of a people who, despite being separated by sea and story, never truly drifted apart. Thanks to DNA, we don't have to guess anymore. We know, and knowing brings us closer. So what do you think? Have you ever taken a DNA test? Did it reveal any Irish or Scottish connections you didn't expect? Share your story in the comments below. We'd love to hear where your roots lead. If you enjoyed this video and learned something new, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with someone who has Irish or Scottish roots. And maybe, take a DNA test yourself. You might discover your story is bigger than you imagined. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.